As we continue off with more conversations, the International Day of the World's Indigenous People is observed on the 9th of August each year to raise awareness and protect the rights of the world's indigenous population. The theme this year speaks to protecting the rights of indigenous peoples in a voluntary isolation and initial contact. Namibia has ratified the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of, in of Indigenous. With more on this, we're now joined by Rebecca Namwandi, the Deputy Director of Marginalized Communities within the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication, and social welfare. She now joins us via Zoom to give us all the details. Good morning, Ms. Mondingi, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Wendy, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Good morning to you too, and uh, good morning to the viewers. All right. Annually commemorated on the 9th of August, which is today, this day promotes the rights of indigenous people. Why do you think this day is significant? The day is very important to the indigenous populations across the world, especially those ones that we're celebrating today to, with the theme for this year, respecting the rights of those ones in voluntary isolations, because these are the people who chose to create um, minimal um, contact with the non-indigenous uh, populations to, in order to protect their land, territories, or natural resources. We aim to celebrate the culture, promote a harmonious working relationships between the non-indigenous minorities and, and or non-indigenous populations together with the indigenous populations across the world. All right. As I mentioned earlier, the theme this year is protecting the rights of indigenous peoples in voluntary isolation and initial contact. Can you just expand on that? We do have um, uh, across the world uh, indigenous population who chose minimal contact with under other non-indigenous populations within their country. And this is mainly done to protect their land, their territories, and natural resources. They, they do it, it can be done permanent, or they do it as a, a temporary solution to just uh, sort of uh, demonstrate their right to human, uh, to respect and human rights. Uh, we do have na nations like this, especially in Latin America, in Brazil, per Peru, and uh, Ecuador. But we do also have such nations in, especially Central Africa, who are known as the river people or the forest people as, as well. And we, are just using this term to this theme to protect to, to, to advance or to promote their their the, their right to human dignity and their right to culture, their right to their land and territories as well. All right. Namibia has a considerable number of indigenous people living in its territory as citizens who are the who are recognized as the marginalized groups of Namibia. The government through the uh, through cabinet decision number 20, 25th of the 29th uh, dot 11 2005 slash 001 has established the sun development in 2005. This was um, aimed at uh, first tracking the integration of the sun communities or sun community members in the country, but also subsequent to the inclusion of the Ovatre and Ovachimba um, in 2008. So from 2005 up to now, we only have the Sun of Atwe and of Achimba who are recognized as the marginalized communities in Namibia. The Sun are found predominantly across the 10 regions uh, with the ex exclusion of um, commas where everybody of course lives, Hardap, uh, Erongo and Karas. And we also have Ovatwe and Ovachimba who are located in northwestern um, Kunene, as well as the western parts of Omsati region. So to date, we only have three communities who are identified as marginalized communities, as I've said. All right. Ms. Namwandi, earlier on, I mentioned that Namibia has ratified the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Kindly just talk to us about that. 
the United Nations Declaration of uh, on the Rights of the Indigenous People um, was ratified, and it's it's mainly looking at creating a harmonious and cooperative um, relationship between um, the indigenous populations and non-indigenous population, with mainly looking at the respect for human rights. And in Namibia, we know everybody's rights are in, uh, enshrined in the Namibian constitution through the Bill of Rights. And we know the reason why we got ourselves here is because somehow someone's rights were tr trampled upon um, and maybe not respected. And we are saying indigenous populations and the marginalized communities in Namibia have got the rights to, to the name, to citizenship, to the rights to education, healthcare, and, and, and everything else that everybody else in Namibia has got the rights to. They have the rights to practice their own culture, to speak their own language, and they have especially things that we take for granted, have their own their names in their own mother tongue instead of having their names being uh, coming from other um, non-indigenous um, populations or the non-marginalized communities. All right. Now, Namibia has made some commendable efforts through its constitution and legislation to ensure that the rights of the indigenous people are respected and protected. Kindly just take us through some of these efforts. Since the development of the Sun Development Program in 2005 at the Office of the Prime Minister and to date under the Ministry of uh, uh, Gender Equality, Poverty, Eradication and Social Welfare through Division Marginalized Communities, we are ensuring that uh, the, the, the marginalized communities in Namibia has got access to education. Uh, the, we promote the advocacy and awareness on the rights of indigenous minorities, and we do it uh, in such a way, including this day as well. We are trying to advance the um, livelihood of the indigenous populations in Namibia, as well as access to land. And to date, we do transport especially this year where we transport 1,801 children to school across the country uh, for out, during out weekends and holidays. And I, oh, it's also worth mentioning that we do have 351 students registered at institutions of high learning across the country. So those are the initiatives that the government have set up uh, to ensure that the integration of the marginalized communities is fast-tracked. The day is being commemorated today, the 9th of August. Can you just talk to us about some of the activities that the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare have prepared for the day? We, as a ministry, normally rotates this day across various regions. Last year, we were in Omusati, in Otapi especially, and this year we chose to visit the community of Swakopmund because we have quite a large number of the high income community living here. And we wanted to expose all our people to each other. We do this as a cultural exchange program and also that we know even somebody that is living a queer living in Bawata National Park, uh, one of them have never met somebody coming from a Maheke region or Omsati, for example. So we are exposing ourselves, uh, our people to each other and also to the larger Namibian population. And we have uh, a day, we will be commemorating this day in the open space between Mondesa and DRC. And we have a brass band uh, from the Namibia Correctional Services that will lead the march from Mondesa, Vurman and Brock. And we will then walk the streets from there up to the venue in the open space, as I have said, between Mondesa and DRC. We have eight regions represented here, and these are the, the, the communities that are going to showcase their culture, their indigenous knowledge, their language, and, and everything that the marginalized communities have to offer. And we are really inviting the communities of Swakopmund, Vavish Bay, um, Arandes, Hentis Bay, and all the visitors that are in Swakopmund to come and uh, celebrate this day with us today. All right. Any final remarks before we let you go this morning? 
Um, we are just uh, appealing to the Namibian nation to know that the marginalized communities of Vatre, San, and of Achimba have got the rights to respect it. They have the rights to practice their culture. They have the rights to speak their indigenous languages and, and, and they have the rights to education as well. And um, that is why we are inviting the Namibian nation to join us today in commemorating this day. But we, it's also very, um, to, 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 to maybe to inform the Namibian nation, because these are things that we take for granted. Every day you hear questions like, but do, do these people go to school? Of course they do have, they do go to school. And like I said, we have 351 students at, in, at institutions of higher learning this year who are pursuing various degrees and uh, diploma uh, qualifications. We have seven of those uh, that are at the IUM Coastal Campus joining us today to celebrate the day with us. We have graduates that are coming out of these scholarship programs, uh, uh, program that are still unemployed. So whoever it is that is having a job opportunity for these young graduates um, can please contact the ministry so that they can be offered something, even if it's just an internship for them to acquire on the job training. All right. Ms. Namwandi, thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you so much, NBC. Right. Rebecca Namwandi, who is the Deputy Director of Marginalized Community in the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare, talking to us about World Indigenous Peoples Day, which is basically commemorated today, the 9th of August. And the celebrations this time around will be taking place in Swagopmund.